Hey, how's it going? My name's Phil. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Phil My Gloss. Today we're starting a new series of videos called the What Is series. So today we're gonna to be looking at Albarino and what exactly is Albarino. So let's jump straight in. So what is Albarino? Let's start off with what it's not. So it's not a geographical location. You can't go and visit it. It's not a winery, you can't book a tour there. It's a grape. Uh, so that for those of you that don't know, grapes actually have names and Albarino, if you're in Portugal, or Albarino if you're in Spain where it comes from, is the name of the grape. It's also a white grape. Now I mention that because you can actually make white wine from red grapes, more about that in a later video, and it grows very, very well with the topography and soil in Galicia and especially Rias Baixas. So, what does it taste like? Well, the closest thing I'm gonna compare it to that everybody knows about is Sauvignon Blanc. It's quite similar to Sauvignon Blanc in that it's quite light bodied. In other words, it doesn't have flavors that are gonna blow your palate out. And it's quite citrusy as well. So it tastes of lemon and lime. Now where it differs is that with Albarino, you get a bit more of that flavor of grapefruits, which you don't normally get in Sauvignon Blanc. It's also very famously got a salinity. So literally a taste of the sea, the sea salty sort of sea. And the best way to describe that is, imagine you're at the seaside and you can, you can smell that sea air. It's almost like a taste like that. Now, not every Albarino has that famous salinity. It's quite a, a well-known trait for any Albarino wines that come from Galicia and Rias Baixas. And the reason is because that area of the world is right on the edge of Spain with the Atlantic Ocean and nothing else in front of it. So what happens is you get all this Atlantic wet weather coming in and brings all the sea spray and everything and it gets into the soil. And those nutrients from the soil go up into the grapes. And a lot of people will say that they can taste the sea. Now, now listen, it's all subjective at the end of the day. I, I think I can taste it. And it's not just from somebody suggesting it to me and me saying, oh, you know what, actually I can sort of taste that. It's because I do believe that I can taste that. What it means is that it, it just gives it this real sort of trait that you don't really get from Albarino anywhere else in the world. And it's, it's, it's lovely, it's really, really nice. And it really gives it a, a point of differentiation. So, because of these conditions that the grapes are grown in, right on the edge of Spain, you've got the warmth of Spain, you've got the weather coming in from the Atlantic, so the warmth, the wet, it creates damp conditions. And in those damp conditions, a lot of the grapes can spoil. So for this reason, you can't really pick these grapes with a machine, which would give you economy of scale. So all these grapes have to be hand-picked, which is an extra cost of labor. Now that will push the price of an Albarino up. Um, if, if you're buying a cheap Albarino, it may have been harvested by machine, in which case you've got a load of bad grapes going in there. You probably don't wanna buy it. It's gonna be very thin, very acidic. The flavor's not really gonna be there. I mean, what that means is like, like if you're paying good money for your Albarino, and it's not bad money. I mean, what are we talking like? three or four quid more than your average Sauvignon Blanc to get a decent bottle of Albarino. And if you're paying that money, then what it means is all those grapes have been picked by hand, any bad ones have been thrown out. And it just means you're getting a much, much higher quality of wine. It's, it's guaranteeing the quality. But for this reason, as I said, it just means you're paying a couple of quid more than you would for your Sauvignon Blanc, your Pinot Grigio. But in my opinion, it's worth it just for something a little bit different, a little bit more grapefruity, something that goes really, really well with seafood, fish. Oh, beautiful, amazing accompaniment with that. And that's to do with the light body of the wine. It doesn't blow out the flavor of the fish. It doesn't over overpower it in any way. Really, really good match there. Now, as I said, you can get Albarino from anywhere in the world. Australia have taken it and produced some really, really good results. Um, it just depends whether the Albarino takes to the local area and they're all gonna have their own expressions, if you like. And in my opinion, nobody does it better than the wineries from Rias Baixas in Galicia in Spain. They really, like I said, get that salinity, that, that, that extra character that they managed to do something with. Plus they've been making it there for centuries. They've, they've, got, you know, they've made one or two bottles. They've got a bit of expertise there. So, I hope you found this video educational. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever had Albarino and if you have what you thought of it. Don't forget to like the video. If you want more content like this, subscribe and I'll see you next time.